Here's a different video. I thought I'd try something a little different. Uh, a lot of people do the electrostatic levitation with a piece of aluminum foil with a little curve to it between two charged plates. And the little foil should lift up and levitate and spin. I haven't gotten it right, but you can see it. Moving, let's try it again. Okay, it tries to work. So now, what I've decided to do was step it up a bit. Two charge plates and the little aluminum will lift up. So, what I've decided to do now is well why not the whole plate levity instead of the little, little aluminum foil lifting up what about the whole plate now it's untethered though but it's actually moving now now the whole plate can lift up that was levitating this little thing so put a wood stick on it Not bad. So now anyone that talks about ion wind, well, this is a plate on top and a plate on the bottom. So ion wind cannot go down and eject through the bottom. This is a sealed unit, but it can still lift off. Now, my original design of this one, it produced so much thrust. I was actually forcing it to stay down. I don't know how I did it. And I mean, it really shot up. It was actually had more force than the rectangular one that I had. So it's still always work in progress, but it is not ion wind. Ion wind is a byproduct. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. That's why these work. They don't work in a vacuum because you took away the dielectric, which was air. Replace the air with something else, then it should work in a vacuum. One YouTuber, he had it in mineral oil and it worked because the mineral oil was the dielectric. That's why everybody says, oh, it doesn't work in a vacuum. It doesn't work in a vacuum because you took away the dielectric. It's the same thing with a car engine. Car needs gas, spark, and air. If you take away the air, why should the engine run? These should not work in a vacuum because you took away one of the components to make it work. That's the reason why. The noise is a corona discharge, so that's why you hear that noise and why it's not producing a lot of thrust. But the point is, is that it actually works and lifts off with a top plate and a bottom plate. The foil is folded over. This simulates the wire, so you do not need a wire. You just take a piece of foil. I put it on a little box and fold it over the edges and then just cut them. This acts as the sharp point. So you don't need wires. You don't need a skirt to make iron lifters work. You don't need them. You don't. I'm going to try it with a heavier stick.
and you can actually feel the static attraction. It's actually pulling the wood down. So this wood actually can act as a dielectric because it's non-polarized. It gets polarized between the electrostatic field. But yeah, you can see plate, plate. There is no gap. I call this one the Colosseum because it kind of looks like a Colosseum. But yeah, like I said, the first time I did this, I think this was actually a little bit higher because the voltage, like I said, my multiplier, it puts out different powers at different times, but the gap was a lot higher. And like I said, when it lifted off, it lifted straight up and actually had two pieces of wood holding it down. So it's how you design your iron lifters because it's the same power that I'm putting in. Different designs will give either lift, no lift, or a lot of lift. So it's, it's working with the design and the amount of power that your system can provide. All right, that's it for now.